Welcome to Red Beer Radio. I'm Brian Keith, and today is episode 100. Who could have imagined we'd get to 100 episodes? And to join us on episode 100, we have the same gentleman as episode number one, the illustrious, the world famous Greg Jenkins. Welcome back to the show. Thanks, man. It is an honor. It was an honor to be guest number one, and it is a privilege to be back. As you probably know, I'm a bona fide fan of the show at this point. It's nice to hear like your introduction and your cadence and how you've developed as a host across the 100 episodes. So off to a strong start here, Brian. <laughs> Thank you much. I've had people saying, you know, maybe you should go listen to the first few episodes And then listen to the most recent few and see what's different, Yeah, right? And see how we've developed. Yeah, I had an interesting observation, right? Like if, you know, I don't know if people have heard it or if they're willing to go back that far to two years ago when we recorded episode number one, but that episode was like comically long. (laughs) It was an hour long, yeah. Yeah, like an hour and 10 minutes, something like that. And then almost immediately afterward, you shifted to a shorter format, like, you know, 20 to 30 minute episodes. I know this isn't what happened, but it's almost like we recorded that episode and you were like, nope, that's not it. And then you switched gears. <laughs> Here's what happened. You did a survey. I remember you did a survey. Yeah. Yeah. I did three episodes that were like an hour long. I did a survey and I asked people, what do you want? An hour-ish, 40 minutes-ish, 20 minutes-ish. And overwhelmingly, 80% of my audience said 20 minutes. I said, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is not what I just recorded those first three episodes. So within the first 10 or 20 episodes, there's three of those fairly long ones. And you know, nowadays, almost everything is 15 to 25 minutes. Yeah. There is one person who I typically do an hour with, and that's John Robin. We're talking more about philosophy and tribalism and all kinds of big ideas where boiling it down doesn't really work. Sure. But that's the only person. Yeah, the one-hour episodes with John Robb are the condensed version. (laughs) It truly is. I'm recording again with him tomorrow for our fourth episode, and I was trying to explain the topic to my fiance, and I was like, okay, so I'm interviewing John Robb, and we're talking about societal artifacts, and I tried to condense, and I realized I could not even summarize. I could not even give a one-sentence description of the idea we're talking about. It is so complex, so new, because he is envisioning what's going to be happening in the 2030s. And I can't even put it into one sentence. Well, consider that a little foreshadowing for your guests. (laughs) Yes, folks. But I want to highlight lesson number one. I don't know. We're like two minutes into this episode. But (laughs) you just said, yeah, I just asked my audience what they wanted. And then I shifted to deliver the thing like in the format that they were asking for. And I know how obvious that sounds, but it's far too rare for us to just ask, right? As marketers, we spend so much time trying to read our customers' minds, trying to read our prospects' minds. And sometimes the answer is to just let them tell you. And you did that, I believe, with a Facebook poll, or maybe it was a formal survey you set up. But I remember it, and I remember seeing the results, and we had already recorded our episode, and I remember thinking, (laughs) well, next time, yeah. So I think it's an ego thing in part, because if we ask people what they want, and then what they want is not what we thought they wanted, we feel wrong. Totally. And I like feeling smart. And when you ask people, you might be wrong. And that's like, oh, man, I wasn't as smart as I thought I was, which is funny because what I just said is true at the same time as what do we tell our clients? Oh, well, you have to split test. You have to split test. It does not matter how much you think you know. You have to test. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot going on behind that. And I'm no statistician, although my younger brother is. He's like pursuing <laughs> his PhD in organizational psychology, whoa, but with an emphasis on statistics, right? And so the more I talk with him, the more I realize like how much there is that I don't know, right, about that whole field and space. And I think that's true for most marketers. But the point that I'm making or failing to make at this point is that there's a difference between what people will say they want, right? And then like what they actually engage with or resonate with, because there's a difference between like who we are and who we ideally like want to be. But I don't think that's the case for like the duration of a podcast episode. But in general, part of the reason we're split testing is because people will tell you what they like think is going to happen. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the gym six days. But like when you test it, you realize, okay, well, they're actually not they think they want content every day, but it overwhelms them because they you know don't have the time to engage with it or what have you. So with the podcast duration, I think that you probably hit the nail on the head. Just tell me how long to make it and I'll make it that long. 
it's interesting because it makes a lot of people shorten what they want to say. I was interviewing a friend of mine who is a heart surgeon, Dr. Philip Ovedia, ovediahearthealth.com. Yeah. And he's a heart surgeon, literal heart surgeon who's starting a concierge heart health practice. So men age 35 to 55, somewhere in there is really his focus. And he helps you take care of all of your metabolic health. So how are you going to get a guy? who's been a heart surgeon for a long time, right, who right. himself has gone from being morbidly obese to being incredibly fit because he realized he was following the advice he was giving his patients who were then getting heart attacks. And he himself was really obese. He's like, wait a minute, I'm doing everything I was told to do. So his story is incredible. And then we boiled that down to like, I don't know, 20 minutes, 15 minutes. And afterwards he said, that was really good for just getting me, it was too brief in a lot of ways, but it was good for getting to focus. And how much attention do we really have? We've all gone to the four-day business convention and we come home with like a pile of notes, a big smile, and we're exhausted. And we're among the elite if we deploy even two ideas from that four-day convention. Right. Yeah, I think that's another lesson is like we as humans, I mean, present company very much included, can be a little long-winded. Mm. And so it takes practice, it takes intentionality to like be succinct, to be direct without losing like the substance, right? And so one copywriting tip for people is to like write it in a way that you are proud of and then comb back over it like you're editing a tweet that's too long and try to challenge yourself to make it shorter, to remove the fluff, so to speak, or the preamble and to you know, write it in a way that makes it easy for people to get to the meat of what you're trying to say. And that's an ongoing practice. Like, I don't think that's something that you like learn overnight, and then you're just like done with it. I love writing. But the problem is that I also love telling stories to my own detriment sometimes, because it prevents people from getting to the lesson that I'm trying to deliver. I love what you're saying. I love the practice of take your idea and What's the one sentence version? What's the 100 word version? What's the 500 word version? What's the one word version? <laughs> right. Not that you need to publish those shorter versions, but just to force yourself. Yeah, it's a good exercise, right? Yeah. I think about one of my intentions for today's podcast, which is talking about an incredible experience I had in the past at the retreat that you hosted that I went to. Mm -hmm. And I think, okay, well, yes, I want to do an episode on this, but let's just live vlog right now. What's the one sentence version of what I want to say about the monkey pot retreat? And I'm doing this live, folks. I'm not planned ahead here. So let me think about this. The one sentence version is something like gathering passionate entrepreneurs in a community of trust in a well-structured environment creates magic that lasts a lifetime. That's the one sentence version. <laughs> Wow. I mean, that's high praise. It's perhaps a bit Disney for my liking. Perhaps. A little aspirational there at the end. But yeah, I mean, maybe we're putting the cart before the horse here. But like, how do you take this event that is so like multifaceted and boil it down into like a description that lets people understand it so they can know if they want to apply or attend, right? And like, that's marketing. It's like, how do I take the transformation that this product makes possible and position it in a way that people can easily like engage with it, understand it, and then decide, yeah, this is what I want, or this is what I need, right? And especially because the results different people got were so different. Totally. Yeah, right, right, right. I attended my first one as one of your coaches. So I was there with a client of mine. Yep. And the experience my client had was incredible and quite different than my experience as a coach, which I got to have an amazing experience. Folks, if you've ever heard me say that my Redbeard core values are truth, kindness, focus, speed, and victory, that comes from a monkey pot retreat. And it comes from Greg creating the structured environment for figuring out what we need to work on with each of the members of the Monkey Pod Grove that attended. And then what do you need to do? And I ended up deploying with the client that I was there coaching. I deployed this core values thing in this structured environment that Greg created. And then afterwards, I think it was on the last day, I was up early in the morning and I thought, man, that was really good for my client. I need to do that for myself. <laughs> I've been making excuses, right? I'll do it later. It's on my Asana task list, Greg. I'm going to do it later. It's a total commitment. It's next to the other thousand things I'll do later. And I said, I got to do this right now. And so I started working on it. And now here we are. I'm like, wow, to be able to clarify my story in terms of truth, kindness, focus, speed, and victory, and get really clear on that it's been really transformative in my business. And that comes directly straight line from 
the structured environment of the monkey pod retreat, even though you did not say, hey, everyone, we're doing a core values thing. You just created this environment and then you had a bit of structure around there and you had the people in there who had already joined your OG membership and were part of your monkey pod group. So we had this very trusting community. It wasn't just here's 20 strangers or here's eight strangers. Yeah. It was we're all on the same page. And it was sort of like we're all signed up to be Team Greg in terms of Greg's values, the monkey pod values. So I actually, I think I'd love to hear about that. I think that might be the beginning of this is how do you gather people with similar values into a community and communicate those values to create that trusting environment? Man, why don't we do this? Let me back up a little bit and give a little context about monkey pod and like what monkey pod is, because I feel based on like the guests you have and like the, our proximity, like I feel like everybody knows this, of course, but they certainly may not. So Monkey Pod is my business and it serves small business owners, specifically keep users. And it does it in a way where I focus on education. Historically, my business was like I had a progression path of virtual courses teaching people how to use the keep platform. The courses were a la carte. And then the people who bought these courses could end up joining my OG membership which is the private community that Brian is a member of and is a big supporter of and that he just referenced a few moments ago. And that was like the courses teach these individual concepts. The membership is a place for people to like work on it and to develop that muscle over time and to ask questions when they get stuck. But the membership community is a very much like a one-to-many environment, a one-to-many virtual environment And so the nature of the progress we can make or the scope of the problems that we can tackle is inherently limited by that medium. Somewhere, I think it's got to be like 2017 or so, somewhere along the way, I realized I felt like kind of stuck in my own business. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I need to like go. Actually, it was Sarah's idea. She said like, maybe you should take a retreat, take a weekend. Sarah is my partner, by the way. And go like work on your business and like go unplug, like go like rent a cabin somewhere and like, you know, work on monkey pod and like figure out like what's missing, what's right, what you need to double down on. I was like, you're right, I should do this. And as I was describing it to a mutual friend of ours, to Justin, he was like, yeah, I need that too. (laughs) And then it happened again with Eric Sparrow, who's a friend and an OG member. And I described it to him and he said, yeah, I also could use that. And so we found a fourth person and like that was the first retreat was like it started off as like I need this space to go like work on my own business. But what I learned that weekend hosting my friends was that like, you know, there's something here. There's something to this model where it's like part think tank, part entrepreneurial like summer camp, you know, vibes and with a core emphasis on like progress, on actually making progress Because I feel like the word mastermind sort of in the marketing space and small business community, it's been watered down to a sense. Like there's masterminds for everything and there's masterminds all over the place and plenty of them are very valuable. But commonly what happens is sort of what you described with the conferences is people will like get together, people will thought partner, people will have ideas and then something gets lost when they go back to their business and they don't necessarily, you know, create the space to put those ideas into action. So the Monkey Pad Retreat, whatever shape this event takes, one thing needs to be true. I want people to leave having done things from their to-do list, not just like ideas and good intentions and, and inspiration, although those things are great, but I want people to leave feeling like, okay, I've made progress. I've got something I can like point to and touch or hang my hat on and say, cool, we've grown, right? So there's a long and winding roundabout backstory, but the punchline is like Monkey Pod has continued to evolve. As of January this year, 2021, my virtual courses are now free. So thanks to a partnership with Keep, all of the Monkey Pod courses are available to all Keep users free of charge. And what that means is that those courses can have a bigger impact and serve our Keep community. But it also means that the monkey pod business model has fundamentally changed, right? If you slice off those courses that were, you know, one third of my offerings, now monkey pod, the business is effectively the OG membership and then the occasional retreats that we've run. And I think I've run six. I knew you wanted to talk about this, so I was adding it up. We've bounced around the different locations. The format, you know, structure continues to evolve. And like you said, Brian, like it means different things to different people, But the core 
common denominator is, yeah, these are largely keep users. These are monkey pod members and individuals who recognize they have untapped opportunity in their business. And just that maybe if they had the space and the resources to focus on it, that they could, you know, harvest or extract. And so the goal of the retreat is to create that space, to give you, you know, room to focus on the things that are on your to-do list that haven't moved and to equip you with the tool set to tackle it. Because I know that sometimes the reason it's on that to-do list is because you don't feel capable or you're missing some piece of the puzzle, which is why I bring in experts like you. Brian, you mentioned you were at that retreat as a coach. So the business owners that attend, I also bring in a specific consultant to work with them one-on-one. Actually, that's only partially true. I've had people attend solo, like to work by themselves, but for the folks who need some extra muscle, right? Some extra firepower. I bring in a consultant and pair them together for the stretch of the workshop so that, you know, you get the benefit of the insights and expertise from the group that's there, the feedback from the different business owners and industries and perspectives. And then you also get hands-on attention on your business to technically implement whatever it is that has emerged as a priority for you. What people got out of the retreat that I went to was quite different. Right. We had some people who spent most of their time working inside the Keep app, building stuff out. Yeah. The person I was there with coaching, we never even opened up Keep. It wasn't a software question. So we ended up doing things like our core values process and then even recording a bunch of videos so this client could better communicate with their team about who they were and why they were doing what they were doing. Right. We didn't know. That was not what that person thought they needed going in. But as a result of the format that you have, the particular structure of the monkey pot retreat, at least that particular version, we identified, okay, what we actually need is this over here. We don't need to go deploy a few more keep campaigns. That's not the most important thing. Yeah. The event has largely followed the same format, but I describe it sort of like a physical for a human, right? The process for having like your physical that your doctor delivers is pretty uniform. But the results it reveals or the priorities it reveals are individual, right? So like you can take the same people through the same process and reveal different outcomes, right? Mm -hmm. And so the Monkey Pad Retreat kicks off, like people arrive to wherever this is. The one you attended was in La Jolla, just north of San Diego. And people come in on whatever day it starts and there's like a welcome dinner, you know, where we sort of like have dinner and, you know, break bread or what have you. And like people get to know each other and sort of break the ice. And the reason I do that is because the first day, the next morning, things kick off with hot seats where the different business owners who are attending each get a block of time, depending on how many people are there and what the day is structured like. It's, you know, an hour and a half to two and a half hours, something like that. They get a block of time to talk about their business, to talk about their challenges and to use like the collective group, the other business coaches, the other business owners who are there, myself as the host at the one you attended, I had also brought in Justin as a facilitator And so you get these different ideas and feedback on whatever it is that you're stuck on with the goal being to generate like an action plan, like coming out of this, like what are the problems I'm up against? Where are my biggest opportunities? And then where should I put my focus to move the needle most immediately? My dear Greg, you were underselling this experience. Folks, when I was there getting to watch the various business owners go through the hot seat process, you have something like 10 high powered entrepreneurs listening to your problems and then asking questions and digging into what's really happening. What are your options? I don't know what the hourly rate would be <laughs> if you had all those people in the room. It's like 10,000 an hour. It's something insane. Right. Because the kinds of people who go to the monkey pot retreat are serious entrepreneurs who are completely invested in their business. And you had people there like Justin McDonald, his skill set is pretty incredible. You had Ronnie there as a coach. You had Brett there doing video stuff. You have all these people with these hugely different skill sets. And even your fellow attendees, right, to have their own particular ways of looking at things. Right. I don't know that I actually can accurately describe it in words, getting to sit there as part of the circle and occasionally speaking up, but mostly just listening to all these other really smart people say stuff and give perspectives. But then also I would occasionally on each of these businesses, including the ones that I was not there working with, go chime in and maybe some life experience or project or client thing I'd worked on would give the key to that other monkey pot or tree attendee right. where they go, oh yeah, oh yeah, that right there, that's an interesting piece of what I need to do. Yeah. It's incredible. Thanks. I'm not trying to undersell it. The reason I'm so matter of fact about it is because 
the value comes from that group. That's the point that I'm making is like Mm -hmm. time and time again, I feel like this event isn't mine. It's like this collective mosaic that we've combined our powers to generate. Like we've summoned Captain Planet or something by our collective. Well, we built a container. Right. You built a container, which is like with the monkey pod grove inside the OG membership. I'm trying to think here of how much of the smart answers and good ideas in the monkey pod grove come from you, the Greg. I don't know, 10, 20%. And you say a lot of good stuff. You answer a lot of questions. Sure. But there's so many people in there. Well, that's just always going to be the case, right? The collective wisdom of any community dwarfs that of an individual who is a member of that community. And that's the truth for my membership. I'm super proud of it. Don't get me wrong, but it is much bigger than just the Greg Jenkins show Mm -hmm. and the retreat. You described it perfectly. I I created the container, the space for it and like the format for it. But like what colors in those lines is like the various people who help bring it to life. The point that I was making, perhaps too humbly, thank you, is day one is like that. Working through these hot seats and finding our own priorities and creating the action plan that we're going to tackle on the second day. But something interesting happens, right? Like each business owner gets their block of time where the focus is on them. And then they listen to the other business owners and the conversations that they're having. And without fail, we get just as much from those sessions, right? Mm -hmm. You know, our businesses may be different. Our industries may be different. Our challenges are oftentimes similar or even the same. And so hearing other people describe what they're up against, it gives us ideas for our own businesses. There's application in our own space as well. And so I love seeing that happen because people, they might have an idea of like what they want to work on, but almost every time that's only a piece of the puzzle. And there's other factors that show up that could be just as important or even more important sometimes. And then the second day is implementation. It's like, okay, based on what surfaced on day one, like, let's get to work. For some people, it is campaigns. Like, yeah, I need to launch this like to get some sales rolling in or I need to re-engage this segment of my audience. Once upon a time, I had a guy launch a product. He designed and we launched the Candle of the Month Club for his wholesale candle manufacturing company. One time we built a campaign to handle, you know, mentorship session tracking. Like when you have a mentor who subscribes, they get a session every month and we need some mechanism to track if they've paid for more than they've had or if they've had more sessions than they've paid. So there definitely have been some technical projects that have been tackled. But as you described, Brian, with the client you were working with, like it doesn't need to be in the walls of the software, right? At the end of the day, like the keep fabric is the common denominator, but we're also all just small business owners or small business employees or or all just humans. And so I remember you guys were working specifically on like a leadership model yeah. that would help your client feel insulated. They were expecting a child at the time and were like, how am I going to unplug from my business when I have this baby? And so it was like designing well, we need to look at what you're doing and figure out, you know, how to replace you in these different areas. And like, yeah, it wasn't in the walls of keep. It was organizationally within her business. Like, well, what needs to change? And it was a dense project, yeah. but in a totally different way. Well, and then we had this incredible feedback. Like, like from you, we had Justin come on by and listen to my clients wave, describing things and questions and answers. Ronnie was giving feedback. At one point, we had our plan, right? And so we got to present it to other smart friends of Greg's who came on by and go give their perspective. So yeah, there's no way before this client showed up there that they could have actually known what was going to happen. It's an interesting aspect. Yeah. Because usually when you sell something, you say, oh, buy my thing, you're going to get this result. Well, good luck with the monkey pod retreat. Like you may be <laughs> planning for how your business can run itself while you have a kid. Yeah. Or you may be launching some keep campaigns. You can guarantee there's going to be really good sweet potato fries air fried by Mr. Greg Jenkins. <laughs> at least I hope that's at the next one that I'm at because that was delicious. You just don't know. Yeah, yeah. You're touching on something that's like personal to me here because I have had a complicated relationship with this event since its inception. I'm super proud of it. And I've never had somebody attend and say anything other than like glowing positive feedback. But for some reason, I struggle to describe it to people because of that like amorphous nature. It takes a different shape depending on what people need. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard for me to say, here's what you're going to get, because like we don't reveal what you're going to get until you start to open up and get this feedback. 
so the simplest way I can describe it is like, if you know, there's like more, if you know that there's something in your business that's off, like this is an opportunity to like find, reveal and tackle that thing. But the marketer in me also knows like it's tough to sell something when you can't tangibly point to what the outcomes are going to be. So that's the catch 22 with this bad boy. I will say this, Brian, do you remember the event that Infusionsoft, when it was called Infusionsoft, ran called the Implementation Accelerator? I never went. Okay. Are you familiar with it? Vaguely. Okay. So it was like a $10,000 high-end product where a business would come to the headquarters. They actually may have ran it. We did run it remotely a couple times. We ran one in Sydney that I was a part of, but you would effectively pay $10,000 and you would come to this you know, multi-day function where they would pair you with a Keep certified partner to work on your business for two or three days. There'd be 10 or 12 businesses there at the same time. And it would be this big you know, workspace where you had a pod of desks and maybe you and your business partner came and then you were paired with a consultant and there were different floating resources. It was a massive undertaking with like just a lot going on. And they would bring in copywriters and videographers and API script writers, people to like make technical connections as you needed it. And so as like you got to work with your consultant, if you needed someone to write a video script or to write some email copy, you would like submit these different tickets to the different like resources that they had collected, right? The goal being like, when you're here, you just make progress. And we've brought in all these other things to like, eliminate the friction points. Because if you're working on a project at home and you hit, well, I need a video editor or I need a copywriter or I need a graphic designer, like you get stuck Mm -hmm. and that's where you lose momentum and you get derailed. And so the implementation accelerator was like an answer to that. It was really good. And I attended a couple as a employee who was like working on them. But one challenge they had was that people would go back to their business afterward and they would feel like what just happened? Like they didn't feel like they necessarily had ownership of whatever that was put in place and they were unable to like replicate it. Right. So when I designed the retreat, it was like, well, similarly, like how do I remove barriers? Well, I can bring in these external resources to like partner with people. Mm -hmm. But my goal was to create a connection where they could continue that relationship after the event. So like, if you go back to your business like you're not just on your own. Well, good luck. Hope that two days, you know, served you. You've got a relationship that has been seeded that you can tap into if you need it. Of course, I pay the coaches and consultants that I bring in, but my goal is that this relationship will serve them and serve the client moving forward as well. And I get to be the matchmaker in that sense. Now, my retreats are priced more affordably than $10,000, but that also means like I don't bring in the same volume of external resources. I don't have graphic designers on standby and stuff, but I do have, you know, multi-skilled individuals who, like you mentioned, Brett Martineau was there and he does have a background in video. And and I have had other technical resources there who can tap in and build some Zapier recipes or write some scripts. And so my goal is like, yeah, I want to help you make as much progress as possible. But I think maybe the biggest differentiator is I wanted these events to be collaborative. Mm. Because I know entrepreneurs are smart and I know how much we have learned and I know that we collectively undervalue our own experience. But if you put a round table of entrepreneurs together and you know, put their brains on the same problem, like you just can't help but create something powerful and something valuable. And time and time again, I've seen that to be true. And I found that like with the implementation accelerator that Infusionsoft ran, like The business owners were all there, but they may never have even met one another, you know, like that just wasn't like the format. It was like everybody was fending for themselves, competing for the same resources. And so my goal was to create an event where everybody was sort of working together. Like we're all working on our own businesses, but we're doing it together. And something about that collaborative structure, I think, multiplies the progress we make, but it also starts to build these connections between the individuals who attend them. There's a true bond there. Yeah, the cohesion is intense. And part of that is also the fact that the attendees, the one that I was at, were all staying in the same house. Yeah. And so we all had our meals together. I remember one conversation we had over dinner one night where it was just one of these transcendental <laughs> conversations. You know the one I'm thinking of, I imagine. Yeah. Where it's like, wait, that just happened? Yeah. And then sure, yeah, the next day you're back to talking about business and landing pages and whatever but you have this cohesion. 
And I want to touch on the monkey pod growth. And for people who are like, this retreat sounds interesting, but I don't really know the community yet. Right. I want to hear a little bit more about what's exactly in the OG membership. And I want to go give the people monkeypodmarketing.com slash redbeard sure. is where you'll find my affiliate link to go join the monkey pod grove. Yeah. So I'm happy to talk about it. Like I feel a little uncomfortable. And I mentioned this in like the pre-show with you. You, Brian, are a clear fan of this membership because there are very few things like it. And I love that. But I also, like I know that you've mentioned it more than a handful of times on this show. So I struggle with like, you know, wanting to sound like self-promotional, but I'm proud of it. And also, I believe it's not a coincidence that the workshops, the Monkey Pad Retreat attendees come from this community yeah, because it further strengthens that common denominator. And there's an inherent sense of like trust and understanding. Like we're all here. Don't get me wrong. It can be a little uncomfortable on day one where people are like, you know, meeting each other and trying to figure out like, my business is at this point, but where's everyone at and what's our challenges? And especially because like, we're all going to be really vulnerable and small business is personal. And so it's tough to be like, well, I'm proud of my business, but also here are the things that I'm stuck on. But all that to say, it stems from this community, which is the OG membership. OG stands for original gangster. If, if you're like thinking like, well, what's that all about? It does indeed. And that was not intended to be an external facing name. When I launched the membership, in like shorthand on like pads of paper, I kept referring to it as my OGs. And then when I launched it, I didn't have a better name for it. So I just, (laughs) I launched it as OGs and I thought I'll change that eventually. And then I never did. And here we are. And here we are. Yeah. Six years (laughs) later. So the OG membership is a low price monthly subscription. It includes a number of different benefits, but the core and the one that most people are excited about is access to the monkey pod grove. The Monkey Pod Grove is our private Facebook group, and that is the pulse, the conversation aspect of this community. By the way, Monkey Pod is a tree, right? The Monkey Pod like tree, they're all over the Hawaiian Islands. And so Monkey Pod Grove is a bit of wordplay, like a grove of trees. And the reason I highlight that is because literally last week, a mutual friend of ours, Brian, was in Hawaii and they drove past a grove of monkey pod trees. No. And she messaged me and said, oh my gosh, I just understood monkey pod grove. <laughs> Apparently, I've been a little too subtle with that. So I think I'm clever, but clearly the nuance is lost uh-huh. a little bit. But yeah. Anyway, the Monkey Pad Grove is a collection of 200-ish keep users, small business owners, marketing managers, small business service providers. And yeah, everybody's looking for ways to level up and people post questions and challenges in there as they have them. And the community time and time again, you know, weighs in, I'd say probably a good chunk of the conversation is predicated on keep challenges, but it certainly is not limited to that, right? Because we're all using, you know, other tools as well. And as you discussed, we're solving challenges that are not software related at all. So the conversation naturally, you know, spans the small business spectrum. And as valuable as I believe that group is, and I'm super proud of it, it has always been my favorite part of my own business. There's just a limit to the types of conversations and challenges that we can naturally tackle in that format. And so for people who have like said, yeah, I just need more, like I need some hands-on help. I need like a, a dedicated window this retreat has been a pretty healthy outlet and has you know, been like sort of like, all right, well, once or twice a year, with the exception of this last year, we get together in person in a small group format and make massive amounts of progress and you know, change the world and change the lives of our businesses and our customers. No big deal. <laughs> no big deal. I was just reading The Common Path to Uncommon Success by John Lee Dumas this morning and He talked about, as he often does, he says, do things that don't scale. And when you say, yeah, we offer this once or twice a year, I think what a great example of something that does not scale. Right. I'm going to be on stage at Icon, the Keep Convention this November. Yeah, you are. And y'all should show up and listen to my talk on data-driven decision-making. And you know what? That's going to be a big convention. Not as big as it has been some years, but it's still going to be like hundreds or thousands of people. Whereas, Greg, what's the average number of people you have at one of your retreats? Yeah, no more than four businesses. Right. The sweet spot is three or four, and that's intentional. It's because I don't want anyone to feel lost or irrelevant, and it's easy when the group gets too big to like shrink into the shadows. I want this to feel 
small enough that like everybody gets personal attention and makes meaningful progress. And like everybody connects with, you know, everyone else who's there. Like I'm not, you know, making you hold hands and sing Kumbaya, right? Although there was a guitar sesh at the last one. So much fun. But yeah, I want it to be small enough that it feels intimate. And I think that's important to the fabric of the event. So where can people go to go learn more about this Monkey Pod Retreat? They can go to monkeypodretreat.com. There's a, you know, an explanation and an application. You don't need to be a Monkey Pod member to apply, right? That's not a prerequisite. But I will say that like I think it makes the most sense for Monkey Pod members because like you can use the community to solve the surface level problems for day-to-day support or things that you need like in that moment. And then the retreat acts as more of an outlet for like you know what, this has been on my mind for a while. I'm feeling stuck or I'm in a rut or I'm hung up on this and I just haven't been able to like sort it out. And the retreat is like a lever for those bigger blockers, I think. Lever is such a good word for that. Yeah. Having the leverage of both, it's the leverage of all the people who are there and the environment that you built great, but it's also the leverage that comes from getting rid of all the other stuff that's in your way because you're in a different environment, different house, you're around different people and you're not paying as much attention to your normal stuff, right? <laughs> so you have this space so you can actually do your best work. Yeah, you're right, man. That's an important element to this is like we get into routines and it's hard to see things differently. Like it can like literally be tough to see things from a new perspective when we haven't changed our routine. That was the origin story that I shared was like, I wanted to like get out of my own rhythm and like mix things up. And so I rented a cabin in Flagstaff in Northern Arizona. And that was the first one. I wanted like an inspiring remote location where I could feel unplugged, where I could, you know, recharge and where I could just have the space to like focus on my business. And each event since I've recreated that in some format. Like I said, it sort of shape shifts a little bit as it grows and I learn lessons and like, you know, continue to improve the event. But we did one at a working cattle ranch in the Sonoran Desert. The one you attended was in La Jolla. La Jolla by the beach. Yeah, it had a huge wraparound deck and a view of the ocean. And I hosted one in New South Wales, Australia, just outside Sydney in a little mountain town called Lura. That was like a pretty fancy, like country estate is the way I'll describe it. And so each of these properties has had like its own unique vibe. It's not, you know, singular in terms of like the experience in that sense. But every time the commonality is like, well, we've got these business owners who are all here with this clear overlap and the goal of like making progress in whatever sense that shows up for them and for their business. So folks, let's get you some links. To go learn more and get on the list for the Monkey Pod Retreat, you're going to go to monkeypodretreat.com. If you want to go get on the list for the OG membership and look more at the Monkey Pod Grove and find out why I think the Monkey Pod Grove is literally the most fun and most meaningful place on all of Facebook, you're going to go to monkeypodmarketing.com slash redbeard. And then I have one more link for you today in honor of it being the 100th episode, I've launched a survey where I would love to hear what you think of the podcast and what you think could be better, different, everything else. So you might go to redbeardsurvey.com and you might tell me that the best episode is number one with Greg Jenkins, where he talked about <laughs> customer journey mapping. Or you might you might mix it up and say episode 100, where Greg Jenkins talked about the monkey pod retreat and how it will transform your business forever or anywhere in between, really. That's redbeardsurvey.com. And Greg, for people who love your style and just want to hang out with you more, where's the best place to find you on social media? Oh, man, I'm not tough to find. I'm Infusion Greg on Twitter. I am monkeypod underscore marketing on Instagram. Yeah, and if you go to monkeypodmarketing.com, there's a contact us form where you can reach out to me if you've got something specific you're wondering or if you just aren't sure where to turn or if you just want to say hi. And of course, anywhere that Brian hangs out, you know, like the icon presentation, I'm sure I will be in the front row or somewhere mixed into the audience. (laughs) Uh Uh-oh, the pressure's on, folks. (laughs) That is going to be a lot of fun. I hope you can make it, folks, down to icon. It's the first week in November. I don't know what day I'm speaking yet, 
but go ahead and look for Icon or for the Keep Convention to go find your tickets for that data-driven decision-making. Greg, thank you so much for starting off the podcast for episode one and for helping me ring in the bell at episode 100. Thanks, Brian, and congrats on 100 episodes, man. Such a cool milestone, and you have really been doing a service to the small business community with this podcast. Thank you, and thank you to the over 8,000 downloads so far. (laughs) Just getting started.